When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to Judah. Hallelujah. Back to Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept and said, we will go back with you to your people. I will skip, I will jump, and then I will go to verse 16. Ruth replied, and so, and so Opa has decided to leave. Ruth is saying, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away for but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Hallelujah. So we read the, 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 the book of Ruth and we read chapter one, selected verses but we can read it all fully on our own. And the topic for today's session is famine or foe, famine or foe. And what we are, the question that this is posing is that, are you in a place of starvation or are you in a place of contentment? Are you in a place of hunger or are you in a place of satisfaction? Now, I believe that this is a legitimate question to ask, because when you look at the scripture that we have just read, the Bible says that there was a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land, which means that it was factually correct that there was a famine. It was factually correct that there was a starvation. It was factually correct that there was a difficulty. And sometimes, it is factually correct that you have a difficulty in your marriage. It is factually correct that there is a challenge. It is, it is true that maybe there is somebody, maybe either you or your husband, for some reason, don't have a job. Maybe there is a bit of challenge. There is a difficulty of a sort. You know, it is factually correct. But what I want to say is this, that the Bible is saying that although there was a famine in the land, the man and his wife, so this man and his wife and two sons went ahead to live, they went to a different country to live over there. And so they acknowledged that there was a famine in the land, they couldn't deal with it and they left. I want you to realize that in the land, there were many other people resident there. There were many other couples resident there. There were many other families resident there, but other families did not leave. However, Eli, Eli Melek, Naomi's husband, left together with Naomi and his two sons. They all left because they said that that place was a land of famine. Sisters in the house, there have been times when we've gone through certain situations in our marriage. 
And we just concluded that we were starving or there was a famine. There were times when we left. Sometimes we separated in our hearts. Sometimes we insisted to our husbands, let us relocate, let us move, let us leave. There've been times when we have held on to the wisdom of the world and said, do you know what? We can't do it in this country. Let's go to another country. Some have said, I can't make it in Ghana. I can't make it in Nigeria. I can't make it here. Let's go abroad. Let's go somewhere else. Sometimes it is we, the women, who have put pressure on the men to leave. I have heard of a certain situation where the kind of pressure that was put on the man was, divorce me, go out there, get into the other country, and remarry, marry somebody there, get some papers and come back and marry me. Beloved in Christ, there are certain decisions that when you take in a time of famine, you may be taking a decision that is linked to the dark kingdom. You may be taking a decision that is linked to your feelings. You may be making a very serious mistake, but at that time, because of starvation, because of the feelings of hunger, you don't realize it. Sometimes it's all about starvation where there is no money. And so because of that, decisions are taken where we move away from the kingdom alignment into some kind, of, some kind of decision that is not of God. This man was from Bethlehem in Judah. Judah means praise. Judah means thanksgiving. He left the place of praise and went to a country of, the country was called Moab. Those people were not the people of God. Those people were unbelievers, but he didn't really care about that. He was just thinking about the starvation. He was just thinking about the stomach. He was just thinking about the feelings. Sisters, there comes a time in your marriage, you feel so starved. Your feeling and your emotion is so alive. You forget about covenant. You forget about praise. You forget about thanksgiving. You forget about what the Lord is doing and you simply decide to depart. And sometimes you depart from that attitude of gratitude and praise and thanksgiving. And you go straight into a, an attitude of complaining, irritation, anger, disappointment, chit-chatting, telling everybody, et cetera, et cetera. Today, there's a lesson that we are going to learn from the book of Ruth. That you see, when you read what Naomi and her husband did and their children, they left. But you see, sometimes eh, we think that tomorrow is promised. And so we sit back and say, look, I'm going, Charlie, I'll call you tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. Listen, sweetie, tomorrow is not promised. Even the, the, the second or the minute after now is not promised. We don't know whether we will still be breathing or our father would have called us to come back and give account. Off they went. Naomi left with her husband and children. But when she left, her husband died. Hey! I was not expecting this. If I knew, I would have spent more time valuing you. If I knew, I would have spent more time. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that he was going to leave me so soon. And he was going to leave me in the country of Moab, in a strange man's land. Should I fly you back home? Should I ship you back home? Hey. Sometimes we take decisions as if tomorrow belongs to us. We take decisions as if we have time. I've seen situations where they say, we are not talking for three months. Eh, three months, three months, sweetheart. Even one day is too much. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Three months. huh? Do you know what the Lord can do within? Do you know what the enemy can do within that time? And do you know what the Lord could have done with your repentance and forgiveness within that time? Sweetheart, oh, may the Lord give us wisdom. May we not operate according to our feelings. May we not let the famine dictate to us in the name of Jesus. Beloved in Christ, Naomi's husband died. She was left with her two sons. The two sons, because of the, the, the country they were in, they married the woman over there, Moabite woman. After they lived there for about 10 years, you may say 10 years is long, but I tell you 10 years is not long at all. After about 10 years, both of her sons also died. Hey! Now Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. 
sisters in the house, all Naomi had were her two daughters-in-law. Sometimes in your marriage, you realize that in the marriage, you get to be introduced to mother-in-law, sister-in-law, brother-in-law. Sometimes maybe husband has a son or a daughter. I mean, whatever, there are all sorts of situations. You get introduced to different kinds of people. Sometimes you don't like them. Sometimes you feel, I want my space. What is this? I just want us. I, I mean, this is some way. I mean, people are infringing on our, 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 our privacy. Sweetheart, you just don't know. Everybody, every single person that comes your way is important. Everybody is important and everybody, it is, it is necessary that we love everyone that comes our way. And so Naomi was simply left with her daughters-in-law. What if she had a bad relationship with them? What if she had a poor relationship with them? None of them would have wanted to stay on with her. Now, at a ripe old age, she had daughters-in-law that were willing to still love her and stay on. And so I want to encourage you, when people come your way, doesn't matter from where they come. Beloved in Christ, let us love them. Let us love them. You just don't know the reason why they are there. I will share a testimony with you. Maybe when we get part of the way, <laughs> just so I don't lose the train of thought. I'll share te the testimony with you. So let us continue. Verse six. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. Beloved in Christ, the Lord will always come to your aid and to my aid. Sometimes we have a certain attitude that says, when things turn around, I will go back. Uh, in Moab, even in the unbelievers land, they got the message that the Lord had come to the aid of his people. They will hear the testimony of what the Lord has done. There are some when you go through challenges in your marriage, you pick your bags and you pack out. And when you pack out, you say, I'm not going back on things, things until things are good. Sweetheart, that is not the way to live this life. In adversity, don't quit on people. Don't go and live somewhere and say that when things are good, I will go back. In adversity, stay there and let us work together. Patiently endure the situation. There were families that stayed in Bethlehem in Judah when there was a famine in the land. They didn't call it a famine and they didn't die. Whatever it was, the Lord took care of them. There are difficult times in a marriage, but God will take care of you. That is not the time for you to quit. That is not the time for you to pack your bags and go out. Where is your love? Where is your faith? Where is your strength? Huh? Where is it? Where are you going to? And so Naomi heard, hey, the Lord has come to the aid of his people by providing food for them. Quickly, she and her daughters-in-law, they prepared to return home from there. They call that place home. The place you packed out of, you call it home. If it is home, what are you doing away from home? If it is home, what are you doing away from home? I called one of my sons, my oldest, and I said to him, He's just about, he's nearly 17. I said to him, come and help me. I just want to <clears throat> make changes in my room and I want my room to look like, I gave him an idea, like a hotel room. And he said, you know what, mommy? I don't, I don't like hotel rooms and I don't enjoy going to hotel rooms. I don't want home to look like a hotel. I want home to be home. I said, whoa, here I was in my mind. <laughs> wanting to transform my room to look like a hotel room. He said, mommy, I want home to be home. I can help you for your room to look like home. It's going to look good. It's going to look good, but we are going to call it home. You're not going to have, have in our minds that it looks like a hotel room. And I thought about it. That's true. Hotel rooms are not permanent places of abode. People come and people go, but home is home. It's a place of permanent residence. The Bible says Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home. If it is home, then perhaps you should never have left. All right. Now off they went. They went back. He said, 
with her two daughters, reading verse seven, with her two daughters in law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Beloved in Christ, we need to get back to the land of praise. We need to get back to the position of thanksgiving. We need to get back to the place of obedience. We need to get back. These are women that are filled with the Holy Spirit. You and I are women that are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are not women who bow eh, at the dictates of money. There's no money. There's no money. I'm going. Money. In fact, let me call, let me rather call the spirits behind it. Let me say mammon. Mammon, what it does is that it can cause you to become needy. It can cause you to become needy, pitiful, begging, running away, moving. No, don't do that. Mammon can cause us to do that. But when you stay in that place and you decide that, no, for the sake, you see, for what I know, who I know my God is, he's worthy. I will remain. I will stay in a place of thanksgiving. I will stay in a place of praise. I will be grateful for I know who my God is. He will come through for us. Beloved in Christ, he will surely come through for you. They go back onto the road that takes us back to the land of Judah. I came here this evening to tell you to get back, get back on track, get back to the road that will take you to the place of praise. The complaining is too much. The criticism is too much. The crying is too much. Get back on the road that will take you to the place of power, the place of praise, the place of love and unity. Get back to the place of thanksgiving. They got back and they went all the way. And when they went, I'm going to take you all the way down to verse 20. When they arrived, okay, so they arrived in Bethlehem and the women, they were excited. They say, hey, can this be Naomi? Is this you? Verse 20, attitude. Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara because the almighty has made my life very bitter. Don't call me Naomi, call me bitter. Mary means bitter, Mara means bitter. Don't call me Naomi, call me bitter. And you know, when you become bitter, you begin to blame God for the Lord has made my life very bitter. It wasn't the Lord that made you bitter. If you are bitter, you are bitter because of decisions you have taken. Naomi means pleasant, it's pleasant. Pleasant. Don't call me pleasant. Call me bitter. For the Lord Almighty has made my life very bitter. He didn't do it. Any time that we leave positioning, any time that we leave the place of obedience, that we leave the place of His presence, any time that we leave where God has put us, it causes problems. It causes us to 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 lose our discernment. It causes us to judge things wrongly. Verse twenty one. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. No, Naomi, this is not true. In verse one, you guys made it clear that there was a famine in the land. You looked at the famine, although we walk by faith. You looked at the famine. You believed there was a famine and you left in your mind, you left starved. In your mind, you left because you were lacking something. Everything that God has given you, the Bible says that he has given us all that we need for life and godliness. Everything, you have it right there, right now. You have all you need for joy. You have it. Bring it from the inside of you. You have it. You have the ability to be joyful, to be grateful. But why are you choosing something else? Why are you choosing to be dismayed? Why are you choosing to be upset? You have the ability to be joyful. Sisters in the house, Naomi and her husband, they said there was famine in the land. It was factually correct. But they moved it from the land into their spirit and they believed it and said, we got to go. We can't make it here. And they left. Now in verse 21, through the mouth of the woman herself, she said, when I left, I was full. Wow. Really? When you left, you were full. When I left, I was full. I had a husband. I had my husband. I had the two children. We were full. Ah, ah. Now I've come back empty. I thought when you were in my, when you were in Moab and you heard that the Lord had provided, 
you came quickly so that you can come and eat some. She said, rather when I was leaving and I thought it was a land of famine, I didn't realize I was full. Now I've come back, but I've come empty. Sisters in the house, may the Holy Spirit take this word and present it to you in whatever way that will make meaning to you. That the Lord has given you and I all that we need for life and godliness. We don't lack any good thing. We do not lack. I remember once somebody came to me and she said, Pastor, could you please write a letter so that we split our two children, one for my husband, one for me. And I said, I don't write any letters to split anything. In fact, I don't know how to do it. And I said, you can't even split them. <laughs> The first one is part you, part your husband. And the second is part you, part your husband. How are you planning to do the splitting? You can't split. And so we started to talk. And as the Holy Spirit started to just minister, you know, the Holy Spirit was minister. She said, Pastor, all I want is a man. I just want a man. And I said, sister, you have a man. You have your husband. And then she said, but I don't know. I know I feel some way. I don't know. I don't lie. And I said, you have it. Sister, don't believe the lie that is telling you that you lack it. And as we continued, she said, because of that deep desire for a man, she found a certain guy. He was also married. And he said he desired a woman. And before they knew it, they were together in a way that they shouldn't have been. Beloved in Christ, sometimes the thing you think you are looking for, you already have it. What you are desperately looking for, you have it. Somebody may say, I want a job, I want a job. Do you know that the Lord has given all of us gifts and talents within us? As I speak right now, you have yours, I have mine. All you have to do is to find it and walk in that place of assignment. And in that place, there is provision. Somebody said, I feel sexually starved. I want, I want. You have it, sweetie. You have it. You have it. You have it. And when you think you don't have it, it causes you to quit and to live on that which you have. You have it. Eve was not hungry when she went to eat the forbidden fruit. Of all the trees in the garden, you may freely eat. She had it. Sometimes the husband and wife are lying right there on one bed, but because of pride, they won't touch each other. They won't talk. And sometimes somebody says, I won't make the first move. But you have it. It's right there. Yet we do not know the day or the hour that the Lord says, time up, it's over. The marriage is done. And so I came here to tell you, is it a land of famine or are you full? How are you interpreting this? How are you seeing it? Are you seeing that you are starved? Or are you seeing that you are satisfied? How are you seeing it? Half empty or half full? The Lord says, all that you need for life and godliness has been given. If only we will believe the word and hold on to the word. If only we will believe that what our father is saying is true and hold on to it, you will realize that you begin to blossom in that very place where he positioned you. In the Bible, he talks about the fact that in the land of famine, he told Isaac, don't go down to Egypt, stay here. Isaac stayed in the land of famine. And over there, Isaac was able to harvest a hundredfold. 100% hundred is twofold. He harvested a hundredfold. The Lord said, don't slip back to the system of the world. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't backslide. Don't go outside of covenant. Don't walk in disobedience. Don't go back. Don't go down to Egypt. Beloved in Christ, he's talking to us. He's talking to us. We've seen situations where wives have given their approval. We don't want to be here. Go and marry somebody there. After a while, divorce her. Come back and marry me. Sweetheart, are we spitting on covenant? Are we trampling on covenant? Are we despising something sacred? No. 
It should not be. I've seen situations where wives have complained, I don't like that, and then the, the man agreed, made the changes. And whilst they were in that place with the changes, she realized where she was was better. Let's go back. Let's do things the other way. I remember those times. Those times when the husband wants to giggle with us and laugh with us and tickle us. Oh, stop. Oh, ah, what is this? Oh, stop it. <laughs> And sometimes they wanted to be with us, sometimes intimately, whatever, or joking with us. Oh, please, uh -uh. Mm, yeah, I'm tired. Mm, it's not funny, something, something. Do you realize after a while they stopped? After a while, the joke stopped, the tickling stopped, the teasing stopped. And there we were. There we were. When we used to have it, we thought it was a ball. I also know some who have said, I want a husband who will pray with me, who will pray with me, who will pray with me. And then man started to pray with her. At a point, she said, well, yeah, yeah, my prayer, I mean, I'm tired though. Hey, what is this? Let's sleep small. Then at a point, all the prayer stopped. Everything ceased. Hey, hey, oh, I want to go back to that land. But we realized that we have made, we have made an input in that change and in that shift. Tonight, the Lord is speaking to you and the Lord is speaking to me. What is the change that you've made at home? What is the input? Was it for good or it wasn't for good? Was it something that was pleasing to God or he did something that was supposed to satisfy itself and later it ended up blowing up in our faces? What, has it, what is it? The Lord is speaking to us. Famine or foe? The Lord is saying that I've given you all that you need. You are full. You are fine. You are content. Walk in it. Walk in it. Thank me every day. Appreciate everything I'm doing. Recognize that I'm flawless. Recognize that I'm good. Enjoy whichever season you are in now. Sometimes we are in a certain season. We're looking for a child and the child comes. Oh, my back is aching. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh, what is it? When will this child be born? And the child is born. Hey, I need a nanny. I don't know. I can oh, you're waking up every two hours. Hey, when when will you grow up? And the child becomes a toddler. Oh gosh, potty training. Hey, hey, what is it? When will you stop? Oh, oh diaper this, da da da. Complaints. Why won't you enjoy every step of the way? Because really, the Lord has caused you to be full to be full, even in the land of famine. Naomi came back and testified. I went away full. It was a land of famine, but I was full. I was full. It's just that at the time, I did not recognize it. Sweetheart, this word may be ministering to you directly. And if so, it will be good for you to engage with the Lord. Talk to God. Lord, help me. Forgive me. But the times when I didn't recognize fullness and I defined fullness as farming, forgive me. Forgive me for the times I complained unnecessarily. Did I tell you one of the mornings I woke up, had to take the children to one to one to hospital, one to school long ago. And that morning when I woke up, my husband said he's going to jog exercise. And I thought, what? Why are you going jog at this time? We just take one to the doctor. I was just so irritated. I mean, as soon as the, he said it was great, I just thought, oh gosh, why? Are you only thinking about yourself? Da, da, da. Anyway, he went to jog. I was just seething with a certain kind of attitude. And then the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. Hmm. God, is, God, God is good though. Even in the time when we are rude, we are seething. Still, he wants to speak to us. Hey, even in that time, I was in a holy place. I wasn't fasting. I wasn't being still and knowing God is God. No, no, no. I was having an attitude. But he spoke to me. He asked me, Adeline, what about the single mothers? Huh? There are mothers whose husbands have left. There are some whose husbands have gone to be with their Lord. There are some who have a number of children doing it all alone. Some single-handedly are handling six children. There is no husband, but they are doing it graciously. Yours is around. He's there. He's fine. He says he's going to jog and come back. Look at the way you are behaving. Then he reminded me of one of my friends. He said, look at your friend. 
And this woman is always punctual and always full of smiles. I don't know how she pays her bills. I don't know how she's bringing up the children, but the children are sharp in school. The children are doing well. She herself is always pleasant. She, oh, and, and then I realized that, you know what? I need to repent and turn away from that bad attitude and walk in gratitude for really, I am full. I have to be grateful. Sisters, may this word encourage you. May you realize that you are full. Let's just be grateful. Let's be grateful at what the Lord is doing. You are not hungry. You are full. You are full. Now, when I spoke about the parts on um, the daughters-in-law, remember, I spoke about the fact that she had two daughters-in-law and at a point she had lost her husband and lost their sons. All she had were the daughters-in-law. I just wanted to share this with you. And I get this a lot. A lot of people will come say, oh, Pastor, I want a house up. Pastor, I want a nanny. Do you know somebody? Da, da, da. Those who know, <laughs> those who, who come home with me and all that, will come and say, hey, I want someone like your daughter, Eunice. I want, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, a lot of people have said to me, I want someone like your daughter, Eunice. And what Eunice herself says, and what I also say, Eunice said, when I first walked in this house, I was a stranger. The Mensa family did not know me, and I did not know them, but they loved me. They loved me. I ate in the same plates they eat in. I use the same cups they use. We go to the same restaurants. We go every. We go on vacation together. We, we, they just incorporated me in. So now, if you come and you say, I want somebody like her, there are many others out there like her. Love them. But most of us want something that is already cooked, something that is already prepared. And my nanny, sometimes when she begins to tell her story, it's amazing. I often call her and I say, Eunice, thank you. I love you. God bless you. She says, Mommy, you're always saying thank you. You love me. She said, Mommy, you have no idea how grateful I am to God for you and for daddy and for the children as well. Let me tell you something. There was one time when I needed help. With the first two children we had gone through without a nanny or whatever, we, we had managed the situation. Then at a point, my husband had to travel. So we started to look for a nanny. I started by going to agencies, etc. I didn't have a good you know, experience. So I stopped after three attempts. I said, enough is enough. I will not try again. And I simply told God in a very simple, honest prayer. And I pray I'm speaking to somebody today. I said, Lord, I'm not going to try with human effort anymore. I'm asking you to please give me a Ruth and a Naomi relationship. Give me somebody I will love and be a blessing to. And somebody who will love me and be a blessing to me. I'm asking for a Ruth and a Naomi relationship. And I ended the prayer. I didn't search. I had given birth. I gave birth to my last, my last born, the third boy. I took care of him. All the way, four months. It was on the fourth month I had to return to work. And then I remembered somebody randomly gave me a phone number and said, call this girl. She will help you. I took the number. I put it somewhere and I never called. The last day I was supposed to go back to work. My child was four months old. I remember the, <laughs> the phone number. I went to grab it. I went to look for it. I found it and I called. I called the lady. She was called Eunice. I greeted her. She greeted me. And I said, somebody, auntie so-and-so gave me your number. She said, oh, yeah, I know auntie so-and-so. And I said, would you be able to do this job? She said, oh, yes, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be grateful. Yes. I desire that job too, I'll be grateful. And I said, would you be able to start today? And she said, oh, I'm not sure I can start today. Today, I wanna to go do my hair. And I said, but can I meet you today? So I introduce you to my baby and to my mom and dad, grandma and grandpa. She said, oh yeah, sure. So I asked her, where do you stay? And guess what? She said, walking distance from my house. So the person I was looking for lives right so close to me. She's looking for a job, but she decides not to search. And I'm looking for her. And I also decide not to search with human strength. But the Lord who lives outside of time and space and who sees all things had seen. And it was he who brought us together. So I meet her and I take her. 
She sees the baby she, in the car. She's so happy with the child. We go straight to my mom and my dad. My mom runs to hug her. My mom has not seen her before. That was day one. My mom, and that's really who my mother is, runs to hug her. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Because, of course, I call her and I say, I'm coming home. I found a, a young lady. She's called Eunice. Eunice, you're welcome to the family. And grandpa is also pleasant with her. They greet her. And she turns to me and she says, Mommy, I will start today. She forgoes her hairdressing trip. <laughs> she decides to start today. And then she starts. She's been with us for nine years. And to the glory of God, we are just about to see her off into marriage. The ceremony and everything is going to be in our hope. We've already done the knocking. The Lord has been so gracious, so good, so kind, which is really who he is. Her mom and dad have been here. They are like, okay, you guys stand in as parents. We will we'll also be with you and all that. It's, it's just beautiful. We are just planning a wedding. We are doing counseling. We are planning a wedding. I mean, we are, I mean, it, I mean, it's we are all over the place. Now, biologically, I was given three boys. But spiritually, I have sons and daughters of which Eunice is one. And it's just beautiful. So one day the Lord asked me, how did Eunice become your daughter? And then he asked me again, Adeline, how did Eunice become your daughter? The daughter of William and Adeline. How did Eunice become your daughter? And I said, Lord, I was in search of a nanny. And I prayed for a nanny. And father said, you thought you were praying for a nanny. But I always give more than you ask. You prayed for a nanny. I gave you a sister. I gave you a daughter. I gave you a friend. I gave you help. I give you Eunice. Beloved in Christ, sometimes you don't know who it is who is walking into your house. You don't know who it is who is coming your way. You just have no idea. There may be people like Moabite women, like Ruth, like, like Ruth and Opa, Moabite women. They, they, they are not Israelite. They are, not, they are Moabites. But so what? Little do you know that Ruth is going to be in the genealogy of Jesus. Little do you know the impact that the Lord is going to have with that person that has come your way, that person that is going to come and drive your car or work in your home or, or take your, that person. Beloved in Christ, from today, you and I want to be women that are different. We are not going to be women that are afraid of house helps. No. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And so whoever comes your way, the Lord has put the spirit of the Lord in you such that you are able to influence greatly. Now, when Eunice and I go and we go minister, they speak, she, whenever she gets a prophetic word and it, the word that comes is the same thing, says the same, the same mantle on Pastor Adline is on you. That's the, those are the kinds of words that she receives. She can receive visions and dreams and it's, it's so accurate. Yet when, when Eunice walked here, it was in soul. Beloved in Christ, all that you need for life and godliness, the Lord has given to you. You are full. You are full. And may you not describe your situation as famished. No. No. Ruth Naomi herself said, when I left this place, I left full. Now I'm coming back empty. May we stay in the fullness that God has given us. Anything God starts, he finishes. Anything that you depend on, anything that you lean on, trusting God, it is full. It is fully satisfying. Your marriage is fully satisfying. The situation, look, it is fully satisfying. You may see, oh, but there's an absence of this and that. No, sweetie, don't you worry. Don't you worry at all. It is fully satisfying. Oh, but, but this, this person is misbehaving. This is some way we are having. No, 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 sweetie. Even the training grounds, even the wilderness experience, whatever it is that the Lord finds it necessary that we go through is fully satisfying. It is fully satisfying. So let's be okay. 
Some time ago, I was disgruntled and I, I was uncomfortable. I was unhappy that we would get to church and I'm turning around. I'm looking for my husband. He should just come and sit by me, sit in the chair by me. I can't find this guy. And I put my hand back there and I said, I'm asking, please, could you shift? Is the chair free? Is it you? I said, I'm waiting for someone. I'm looking for my da, da, da. Little did I know the Lord was preparing me to be okay to sit alone because a time is coming where he's going to cause you to sit. It is necessary you prepare. But I had a hunger. Do stuff. Come and sit here. Come and sit here. No. You see? So whatever it is, you are full. It's okay. It's good. So this guy is too slow. This is too... No, no, no. The slowness itself is good. Do you see? So that's, that's the thing that I want us to catch this evening. What God does is flawless. It's good. Even when there's a famine in the land, look, Charlie, it's okay. That famine will not take us out. It cannot take us out. Why? Because we are sons and daughters of God. We are ambassadors for the king. It can't take us out. It's okay. You see, I remember, let me add this. Let me add this. So somewhere along the line, you know, a part of our brain sometimes operates with a certain way. I used to have some suspicion and doubt. So, yeah, so... When, when the house helps come and stuff, then you are checking them. You're not sure. You don't know hey, this person is okay. No, and all that. And then we do that with fear. And I remember those times. Sometimes when I come from work, I go to the guest room. I, I always take the child and the nanny to my parents' house. Those times my parents were alive. They are not alive anymore. But anyway, I mean, no, they are alive in heaven. And so I'll go and look for my, my children and go and look for Eunice. And sometimes, a few times, I'll see Eunice. Well, sometimes you see Eunice, she's asleep by, by Benny, by the child. You know, she, she really cares for them and she takes care of them very well. So she's just by and she's taking care of the child. And one day, a little bit of jealousy was in my heart. Ah, why is she sleeping by my child? Why is she so close to my child? Ah, my, you see, and, and then I voiced out the jealousy to my auntie. I said, I don't know, I was feeling somewhere. And my auntie said, would you rather you had a nanny that was, being, that was treating your children wickedly? Or one who lovingly takes care of them and even sleeps by them. I was like, hey, I quickly, I quickly checked myself. You see, the mind battles, the mind battles. Sometimes what you have is good, but then, there, then, then there's a bit of suspicion. Like, what is my husband doing? What is this one doing? What? Check it, just check it, just stop it, sweetheart. Eh? These thinking patterns, they cause problems. Sometimes you say, you know, today there's no food at home i've been eating so i'm leaving sweetie do you know the contract that your spouse is going to sign next week huh do you know the contract that he's going to sign next week and next week when he's praising god and next week when suddenly there's so much flow of abundance is that the time that you're going to pick up your portmanteau and say i'm coming back home how are you going to walk through the door you're going to look how is it going to look so you there you come when things are when, when we are in the overflow huh did you get it do you know what God is doing behind the scenes? It's just for a little moment. It's just for a little while. Why don't we tarry together? So tonight, I just want you to be encouraged. I, I just want you to be encouraged. Okay? I just want you to know that what you're seeking, you have it. You know, there were some times when I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I, I was this miserable wife. I wasn't happy. I'll cry. I'll be miserable. I'll look through the window. I'm looking for last thing on WhatsApp. I'm wondering when will my spouse come home and talk with me. And when he comes home to his tired. And I just wanted a bit of conversation. Now, even the Zooms are too much. I had all the ability for conversation was already given. The ability to be friendly was given, but Adnan was not walking the path. I didn't know I had the ability within me. It's all given, sweetheart. It's all given. It's all given. So spend time to uncover it. Spend time in the secret place with your heavenly father to unlock it. Let it come out. Let it unfold. You have gracious words within you, sis. You have the ability to encourage somebody. I so wanted to be encouraged, but it didn't strike me at the time that I was able to encourage my husband with my words. No, my words were often very harsh. I didn't know that I could encourage him. I didn't even know he needed encouragement. He does, sweetheart. He does. Do it. 
look at this woman who, who was at home and had next to nothing. I'm going to look for the video and put it on the page. Had next to nothing. There was, she said there was hardly any food to eat. And then she was there and then suddenly the Lord started to lay something on her heart. She was thinking, what will we eat today? And then her husband gave her some money. So it, it was very little money. And the Holy Spirit said, go and buy beans. So off she went, Nigerian lady went to the market in Nigeria. She bought some beans and the Lord said, come back and cook more more. I love that dish. Woo. And she came back, she prepared more more. And it was just smelling so good in the house. And her sister-in-law walks in. He said, wow, what's that? It smells good. And she just wanted to hide it because it was enough just for the family. And the sister-in-law said, can I have some? So she feeds everybody, sacrifices her own, and then she gives her some. She takes, she's like, whoa, could you do this for me tomorrow? Bring to the office, how much do I pay for it? And then she mentioned the exact same amount that her husband had given her. It was very small money, but she mentioned that amount. So the woman gave it to her. So the next day she went back to the market. She bought more more beans, came back, cooked it, took it to the office. The woman took it, the sister-in-law took it, and the people in the office tasted, and they all said, do this tomorrow, do this, do, 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 do. They paid for it. And little by little, this more more thing started to blow up. Beloved in Christ, that is what took her to the White House. Eh? In the time of President Obama, this woman did more more, and the more more went to the White House. The, whole, the woman's destiny just changed like that. The woman's story just changed like that. The woman who was at home didn't have anything to eat and humbled herself and used the small pocket money that the husband gave her. She went to the White House, beloved in Christ. Everything that you need, God has already given to you. It is right there. It may look insignificant, it may look insignificant to oh, this woman rose from abject poverty to great riches. In fact, when you Google, it will all splash out. It will all splash out. Abject poverty to great riches. Ayodeji, what whatever, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Yeah, that was it with Momo. Hmm? Sis. So I came here to encourage you. Maybe you are there, you say you something. Me, I don't know, I don't know. They don't give me pocket money. I'm struggling. So say, no, no, you're not struggling. Hmm? It's not family, no. You are full, you are full. I'm going to put a video on the page and then, you know, just watch it. There are many, many now, because right now, see, she has even, she even has a, what's the name of, what's the name of her? Is it a ministry or a restaurant or but I think it's called No Leftovers or something. I don't remember. Sister Corrida, if you find it on Google, please put it out there. It's not a ministry. I mean, for me, most careers, I call them ministry, really, because really, you're ministering to people. I think she calls it no leftovers or something. And, and the woman has learned something, no leftovers. She doesn't mess with anything. She has learned to appreciate everything. Sisters, let me just end there. I said to the ourselves, we're just going to keep it short. We're going to do question time. But obviously, I've gone another, I've done 15 minutes, right? Let me just end here. And then the floor, the lines are open. Sister Nanaya, please host us. Let's be, you be the hostess for tonight. Let, let sisters ask questions and stuff. And let me sit down quietly. <laughs> God I'll bless give, you all. Rest. I love you all. <laughs> I'll give you time to rest. Um, sisters, do you have any questions for Pastor Adline? A lot has been said. She started off with Ruth um, chapter one. And um, she's spoken a lot. Um, if you have any questions, you can either post them, you can put your hand up and, and do ask. Or you have a, um, a contribution. I'm sitting here, I listened with my daughter. She just got up to go take a shower and she was bobbing her head up and down. You know, it's, it's such deep truths that even a child who's, who's 19 can absolutely testify to. What do you have to say on this? What experience have you had? Sister Vivian, you are muted. Did you, did you want to share? Vivian Adika, I mean. Um, Sister Nature, you put your hand up. Sister Nature, please, you can speak. Yes, I did. Thank you, Sister. God bless you, Pastor. Things times, you know, you don't consider. And um, just when we came back from the retreat, um, 
my house help tells me she's leaving next month. And um, she's been with me for three years. The previous one stayed for 13 years. So God has really been good. And just when I thought I was going to start worrying, the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit that the only covenanted relationship we have in our lives and the one he has allowed is that of our spouses. That is the one we have in our marriages. Mm-hmm. And therefore, he blesses us with good people. And therefore, immediately, I began to understand that if he, God, has been able to give me very good people in my life in terms of help, then these people will come and go, but he is the source. And so we don't, I mean, the Holy Spirit was just ministering to me that I don't have to hold on to these people. And I don't have to get upset because they said they're leaving. Because, you know, it's the nature. We could hear you really clearly, but it's just tapered off. I don't know if you can hear me. You know that you're home and everything. You know, sometimes my heart is at peace. Yes, I can. Can you hear me now? Is it yes, clearer now? now? Yes, clearer now. Thank you, sis. Yes, thank you too. So what I was saying was that the Holy Spirit brings people in the form of help into our lives. And we tend to cling to them because of the fact that, you know, everything becomes structured and they become part of our home. And therefore, sometimes when they have to leave, there is that uneasiness because, you know, you begin to stress because it's like you have to restructure your home home once again you have to now you know learn to find people again and you know all that I mean sometimes it comes across as very inconveniencing but what I was saying was that the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit that the only covenanted relationship we have in our lives is that of our marriages Mm. that's the only time that the Lord said so death do us part (laughs) our children will leave people will come our way and they will go And we have to be thankful. The Holy Spirit was telling me, I have to be thankful that at least I've had very good house help since I started, you know, uh, taking on help at home. And therefore, if he has been able to send me good help at home, then where is my worry coming from? Or am I supposed to be worried? So I have to acknowledge the fact that he is my father and he constantly sends me help. He is the source of my help. And therefore, if he allows good people to come my way, I thank him. If they are leaving, I continue to thank him because I believe and trust that he's going to get me somebody else. But so it was just something, you know, the Holy Spirit was teaching me. And then interestingly, Pastor Adeline happened to, you know, use her house help as an example in the (laughs) narrative she shared. And it's something I just want us to understand that there may be a Ruth, there may be a Naomi in your life. And you thank God for that person. But that person is not stringed to be part of your life forever and ever. Just as they come, we love them. We we help them as they help us. And when it's time for us to release them, we also have to be able to learn to release Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Wow, very deep. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's fantastic, sis. Um, And you're absolutely right. but for me, what, what really stuck out, stuck, um, stood out past that line was, you know, sometimes they are, they are hitting you small. Why are you hitting me? I'm tired, this, that. And then mm-hmm. you, you, you lose all that and you start to realize, oh, now I've become bitter. <laughs> I've become mm-hmm. Mara. Call me Mara. <laughs> you know, yes. it's fine so much um, because um, you believe your feelings and then the feelings lead you astray. You cannot mm. trust your feeling. Don't, don't, don't say God, God, God has taken things away from you because he hasn't. You've done no. it. Too. So that, that, that really struck me. And um, that, the analogy with, with Ruth was quite deep. So thank mm-hmm. you for that. Sisters, uh, any more contributions? Hmm. Mm. That's bad, man. They've gone quiet on you. <laughs> I stopped it, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's usually very good because um people have been fed, Pastor Adline. They have been. So we thank the Holy Spirit for what He's done this evening. 
Thank you so much. I think I will listen again. I have to listen again. Yeah. Um, yay, Rita. Go for it, Rita. Oh, just to draw your attention that there are some questions in the chat box, please. I will go back there in a second because I just yeah. ran okay. my phone in. I'll go there now. So um, um, somebody's comment was this, Pastor Adline. I have done so many wrong things that is threatening the survival of our marriage. There are times I just feel like walking out, but for the fear of God, how can this be redeemed? Oh, you see, let me let me tell you something. First of all, sweet says, I thank you so much for your, you know, your honesty, your openness. Because you see, the place of change is when we realize that we've we we we've messed up. You remember the time we handled Genesis 3? I told you that the question, the first question that the Lord asked us was, what is this you have done? So then, so then there is a something we have done that we must recognize and acknowledge. Now, for the longest part, you remember that we didn't realize we had done anything. We just thought the other person was queer, odd, unfriendly, selfish, da 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 da. We we didn't we did we were not seeing ourselves. We were seeing the other person, and we were nagging, complaining, and all that until a time when skills begin to fall off our own eyes. Okay. A time when we suddenly begin to see ourselves in this. Some of us have used harsh words on them. Some of them have this, some of us have described them a certain way. And, and of course, we've learned that our words are powerful and they come to pass. So there's a con, there's a part we've contributed to this. Now, whenever you recognize this, this, that's excellent because you see, right from the time when Adam and Eve blew it, all the way through from the from the prophets of the Old Testament all the way to John the Baptist and Jesus when Jesus came and all the way till now. The message is one, repent and turn to Christ. Repent and turn to God, right? Now, that, that first word is so critical because without acknowledgement and repentance, change is not going to happen. It's not, it's not happening. So that's what we used to do. We were not acknowledging anything. We, I never, I never saw, I, I used to be rather defensive of the thing. I will explain to him why I did what I did. I, I never repented of anger. I didn't even acknowledge that what I, me feeling angry or fearful or suspicious or jealous was sin, right? I, I never, I didn't even realize it was sin, but it is sin. And sin separates us from God. Sin causes us to be dead in our spirits. We become dull of hearing, right? So when I when you recognize this, then it's critical that you have to be like, you know what, Lord, forgive me, forgive mm. me. I've mm. messed up, forgive me. Mm. I, I mean, I've blown it. I mean, I've done it. I've given him some forbidden food to eat. I've given nagging, I've given complaint, bad attitude. I've done it. I've separated in my heart, in my mind. I've, I've judged, forgive me. Now that is so powerful. That if we acknowledge, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Now, when he, when you do that, you must believe it has been done. You are free. You have been forgiven. You are liberated. So that you don't stay in that place of condemnation where you always think that, yeah, I've done it. No, no. You've, you've done it. You've repented. You've asked God for forgiveness. Now it is done. He's forgiven you by the blood of Jesus. Now you are forgiven of, you are, you are clean. Okay, you are clean. Then now in that clean state, begin to use the weapons of our warfare that is not carnal. The carnal one is when you want to use your might and power for stuff. When you want to do things that is not out of faith. He said it's sin. Then you sin one more time. You have to repent of that one too. Anything you are doing that is not of faith. The Bible says it is sin. Romans 14, I believe it should be 23b. So you want, you want to repent of anything you are doing that is not done of faith. Now by faith, begin to speak life into your union. Begin to decree life. So some time ago, I was a nagging woman. I was complaining. I was quarrelsome and all that. But at a point I start, after repentance, I started to call myself a virtuous woman. Nobody knows so. Like it wasn't like husbands around, people around you are calling you. If it's if the whole thing looks ridiculous. No. But you know, nobody, maybe they've all gone to work or you're in the bathroom or whatever. You start to speak life. This time you're doing it by faith. You call yourself a virtuous woman, a wise woman, a daughter of God a help meet to your husband, a lover, a friend, an encourager, a blessing. 
you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you are submitted to the king. So now you are, you are, it's a faith thing, but you've also made it your consciousness. So now faith is becoming your reality. You see, it's becoming your reality. So as you are doing this, you don't realize it, but a certain atmosphere is being created at home. Have you noticed how if you sit together in a car, and you are both having, you know, maybe you're upset about something or in your heart, you are bored about something. Do you realize that even if you haven't spoken it, it is felt? Because it's all spirit. All these emotions are spirit. So it is felt. You feel it, you will feel it. You just realize that your atmosphere is tense. In that same way, after repentance, when you begin to walk in the new realm, where by faith, you are now, you are now, you've come into an understanding suddenly your atmosphere is changing. It has become the place of his presence. You elevate Jesus, wherever Jesus is elevated. The Holy Spirit is very mighty in that place. The angels of God are mighty. There's open heavens where Jesus is elevated. Open heavens is just open. Your heavens is open unto you. So open heavens over your household, over your, oh, suddenly something begins to happen in the realms. This is a very serious, powerful situation. And, and then, and you do it by faith. Suddenly you realize you yourself, you are changing. You complain less, you are grateful more, you will see it. And then, and then it doesn't take long. That glory that God covers you with, he covers your shame with glory. He'll cover you. He covers you. Love covers a multitude of sin. He will just cover you with himself. God is love. And of course, himself, it's a manifestation of his glory. It doesn't take long. Your husband and you begin to relate differently. But some time ago, it wasn't like that. Some time ago, it was, let's talk about it. Yeah, just, oh, oh, dear. Where you see some method, it hasn't worked and it won't work. So let, let's, let's just put those things aside. You see? So this is how we are going to do it. And, and you are going to begin, you are going to begin to decree these things and you are going to begin to desire it. Your prayer points will change. Now you desire, you see, now you are desiring some more, you know, it, it's like, it's like you are desiring, you are desiring something of value. So at a point, at a point, part of the things I used to decree over my home was that nobody will enter this place and leave the same. I said, Lord, because only your presence is welcome here. Yeah, I need to drop this in. Decide, every sister in this house, decide that you will not allow the kingdom of darkness to operate in your atmosphere. You just decide. I, I won't allow it. Kingdom of darkness is not welcome here. Only the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. It's a kingdom of truth. It, you, you know, only the kingdom of God will operate here because some time ago the kingdom of darkness was beginning to seep and and you know in a subtle way creep into your atmosphere and sometimes it crept in through you sometimes it crept in through your mouth your thinking your utterances your your dealings you see and now you said no 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 i'm not going to argue I'm not going to fight. I'm not interested. I have no appetite for carnivorous behavior. I'm not interested. No, I'm not doing that, you know? And then now you say, I'm going to push forth the kingdom of God. That posturing alone, suddenly you realize that, listen, heaven responds to your needs because you've gotten it. This is it. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's power. The Lord wants to increase, move forward the kingdom of God and is moved with love. Do you see? And when I say love, I'm not just talking love, love, feelings and things. No, 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 no. I'm talking God is love, the manifestation of his presence. So, so it's a faith thing. It's an acknowledgement of it. And then you become the faith. You see, it's like the faith that you are carrying is manifested and it becomes true. It doesn't take long. The husband, one of the days, sometimes they'll call you and say, God bless you. Forgive me for this. God bless you. You know, sometimes you'll be there and then they'll just say, thank you for this. Sometimes you'll be there and they'll, they'll just tell you what they have observed in you. And it's an attraction. You see, so please be encouraged with this, sweetheart, at any point that you can. Because look, some are not aware and some do not acknowledge and some will not accept such teachings. Because at this point, all they feel is a lot of anger. They feel the dark kingdom very strongly. A lot of anger, 
a lot of whatever they think things things are not fair they think no, da, da, da. so it's a blinded situation and that's what the god of this world does but if you are saying i think i've nagged him for a while i think i've done this it means your eyes have been opened it's a good thing it means the lord has liberated you he has opened up the eyes of your understanding he's opened your heart as soon as he opens it healing it's like a, a sword that is wounded hidden in socks and shoe that has been exposed. The very moment it is exposed, that's the day it begins to feel. So I'm Amen. very happy with this question. I'm, I'm, I'm just so excited and I thank God for it. And I thank God for your life. God bless you so, so much. Fantastic. Um, you've given some practical solutions. Sorry, I've got, I've got more questions for you, but it's a good thing. Um, the next one, oh, before I read that question, I sent somebody who sends me a direct message, a message back. I don't think they've seen it. Can they please check? I don't want to mention your name. Um, um, one is saying, please, how do I go about the encouragement bit? Because um, she thinks that the person can be quite annoying. How does she go about encouraging? And um, <laughs> so please. <laughs> Okay, 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 it's okay. You know, this annoying thing. Oh, let me try and re remember. Let me try and remember parts of my journey. You know, I used to I used to even feel irritated when he giggles on the phone with friends because I wasn't getting any giggling. So I don't know why somebody's getting a giggle. I mean, the whole thing just used to bore me. Like, ah, I couldn't understand it. So, and and you know, nothing would change you unless you 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 align to. To, to what the word is saying, nothing changes. So it gets increasingly annoying when we stay in that place, right? Anyway, so along the line, I found the scripture that talked about, <laughs> that talked about a man with friends must himself be friendly, right? It's an interesting scripture. I mean, sometimes I ponder over it a bit. So I realized that, look, it, it just started to dawn on me that I wasn't that much of a friendly person. I was a little bit friendly to a few of my Wesley girls mates and stuff, but Charlie, on a general note, I had moved into an, you know, I was just idolizing my husband so much. I, I, I wasn't really having friends, you know, and I wasn't really walking a path of friendliness. And, and the kind of attitude I was having, I'm even surprised that I was expecting my spouse to be drawn to me. I'm surprised because me, the attitude I was having, that's why when the Lord laid on my heart, Adeline, can you marry you like the way you are? I mean, we'll be happy to marry your type the way you are. The answer is no. You see, so I started to realize that I had, I had attitudes sometimes, you know, I don't have high level mood swings, but yeah, sometimes I had some swings here and there, you know, so I started to really, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> the Bible, the Bible talks about the fact that it's good, like from time to time, you need to check yourself, okay? You, you just need to sit down and do a self-introspection, you know? So I saw that I'm not friendly. And he told me, he told me that my conversations were too intense. I didn't even understand what he was saying. Intense, I saying, I don't understand, intense. What, what is that? But you see, <laughs> and he said he just wants very mild, very, you know, very free. I, I, was, I was intense. I, I realized I do things like, like I'm handling some rocket science. <laughs> Even when I'm preaching, the thing looks so strong. You know, hey, you know, sometimes the children say, Mommy, what's that? They blasting us. I said, no, I don't do it intentionally to her. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know. But he told me, he said, you know, he doesn't enjoy it. And even now, and I cried. They, they've told me the truth too. I don't listen. I cried. What do you, you don't enjoy having conversations with me? But it's good to hear. So at a point, I had to review, do a review. <laughs> Those of you in corporate world, me corporate things, I don't know too much, but those of you in your corporate, sit down and review some things. And then I realized now. So then I started to ask. I didn't even pick the phone. He's so embarrassed by himself. I said, seriously? He's just, <laughs> help me. No, I'm just listening to some. Help me too. Sorry, Pastor. Yeah, you can keep yes. going. Yes. So I, I, I asked God to just help me to, you know, to be friendly, teach me how. Help, help me to appreciate him. So do you know, do you know that the sister who is saying that she finds some things annoying? One of the first things God taught me was that he said, he says, Adeline, why, why don't you get interested in what he's interested in? Right. So 
I, and I wasn't interested in any of his finance stuff, stock brokerage stuff, Ghana Stock Exchange, Bank of Ghana rates, and I'm not interested. But the Lord said, you know, be interested. I was only interested in what I wanted to talk about, very selfish love, right? So every time he comes home, I wanted to talk about me, how things were at the office, how I've been today, da, da, da. And he was, he's like, he's tired and, he, hey, you know, he wasn't interested. So when the Holy Spirit started to teach me, Adeline, be interested in his, guess what? I realized I'm just like him. I am also not interested in his at all. But at that time, I hadn't seen it. I was rather offended when he said he wasn't interested in mine. But I realized I'm guilty of the same thing because I'm not interested in his. So I decided to put down my needs, right? Deny yourself, take up your cross. The cross is your assignment and follow Jesus. So I put down my needs and I started to say, hey, how was today? So today, how was the stock market? Oh, wow. So how did the <laughs> brokerage class go? Then you tell me, you excited, you tell me, and tell you, I don't understand half, but so, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it, that went on for a while, but I was doing it not as a do and don't. Do. I was doing it as a word, a directive word I received from the Lord. So I'm, I'm obeying the word I receive. Do you get it? So you know how sometimes you can teach some things and it's as if you are teaching people, go and cook this, go and do that. No, I'm, I'm just saying, do the directive that the Holy Spirit gives you. So one of my friends, the Lord told her, go and be his friend. Go and sit with him. Go and be his friend. That was her message. And she's thinking, what? Didn't you hear what he said to me? Didn't you see how the Lord said, go and be his friend? And then she got up, she went to sit by him. And guess what? Everything turned around. You see, so in my case, the Lord asked me to be interested in what he's interested in. I started to engage him in conversation at that level. The conversation was not intense because me, myself, I don't even understand what we are talking about. <laughs> so it, I'm more quiet <laughs> and he talks, he will do the talking. So that went on for a while, but it didn't take long. He would say, tell me how your day went. He says, oh, how are you doing with this? So that's when I started to realize that it's really about sowing and reaping you know? What you plant, you shall harvest. So when you have that irritative move, when you feel he's annoying, it's very likely he feels the same concerning you. And somebody will have to say no to that cycle. That's, that's darkness. That's kingdom of darkness. Somebody says, nope, we're not going to do this. I'm going to humble myself and honor this man. And that seed you are sowing shall be your harvest. Amen. Do you see it? Uh -huh. So that's how it is. Um, deep, um, deep, deep word for thought, sisters, because um, you need a word. And I pray that this evening, the words that Pastor Adline has spoken, you found something in there and you're going to pray on it and ask Mama. the Holy Spirit to teach you Mama. what you need to do for your relationship personally. Um, um, and Pastor Adline is pointing us to where she got her source and it's really important her source of of freedom came from christ and from from god and that's where she got her word and therefore if she points you in that direction and you go to god god will give you what you need directly for your situation and it will absolutely be what you need and it will be perfect and um, pastor Adline, i just want to encourage you because you come and you water us every day and although it sounds like maybe it's not the right tone for a marriage, but it's the best tone to teach us. So I will read something that somebody has written here and I pray you find it encouraging. This is my first time joining. The Holy Spirit has really used Pastor Adline to speak to me. So many things hit home. I've received a lot to think and pray over. I pray God waters this word so that the fruits I need will show forth fully in my marriage that is um that it can wrap up on my spouse to enable both of us thrive in this covenant amen and amen and amen, amen. so um, um god has given you that 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 demeanor it works for his kingdom and mm. and so be it and we are grateful amen. for that for that line so i hope that encourages you yes, any, yes. More <laughs> any more questions any more questions any more questions? Well, Pastor Adeline, it's been a great evening. Sisters, I will encourage you, if you joined later, to um, listen to the recording when it's posted tomorrow. It will also be on YouTube for forever and ever and ever till, till Christ comes back again. 
and you can Amen. you can find time you can find time to listen to it. It's been a great evening, Pastor Adline. God bless you so much. Um, um, we shall not call ourselves bitter, and we shall never leave that land that looks like farming, looks like in our feelings, and seek something that is greener because the grass looks greener somewhere else, and then come back and blame God, which he never did in the first place. Mm -hmm. We shall not do that. We shall not. So thank you so much. Um, uh, are you going to end in prayer? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So um, sisters, I want us to pray. We want to thank God so much for this time. There have been times when we have walked in bitterness. And even in bitterness, there is grace, okay? Yeah. I want you to remember or to know that at the foot of the cross of Calvary, there were three Marys that were worshiping at the foot of the cross. The word Mary means bitter. And sometimes I ask myself why Jesus will be born through a woman whose name means bitter. I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter the mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how far you've gone, how bitter you felt in the past. The Lord still gives you an opportunity to birth Jesus Christ. And you have all, everything that you need for this to be possible. Somebody may say, how can this be since I know not a man? And he says, that is not the requirement of birthing the Christ. The requirement is the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The requirement is a total reliance on the most high God. The most high God is available to you and to me. The Holy Spirit has been placed, deposited on the inside of you and I. He is your wonderful counselor. He is your prince of peace. He is your help. He is your hope. He is your healer. Tonight, you are not living the same because the power of God is right here with us to help us. Father, we praise you. We thank you. I thank you for all my sisters that have gathered here tonight. I thank you for ministering to us and making it clear to us that we are already full, that all that we need for life and godliness have been given that on the inside of us you reside in us by the by way of the holy spirit in the name of jesus i pray that every single sister will manifest the Christ. We desire you, Lord, your wisdom, your presence, your power, your truth, your grace in the name of Jesus. Sisters are asking, how do I move from point A to point B? But you always make it clear that the how is a who. It's not so much about the how, but it's about who is going to help me to do this. And that is the Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit, tonight as we we are praying. We are asking you to come and have your way. Empty us of ourselves. Empty of us of ourselves. The way we think things ought to be. It's not about our thinking process. It's about the thoughts of the king of kings, the ways of God. Empty us of ourselves and fill us with you. In the name of Jesus, let every daughter of God on this platform, everyone that plugs in at any point in time to listen, let everyone receive your counsel. Let everyone receive a clear directive from you in the name of Jesus concerning their peculiar situation. In Jesus' name, Father, do this and bring back testimonies for your glory. I praise you. I thank you. All 120, over 120 sisters that gathered tonight, let nobody leave this place the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the marriages be turned around let the homes let the homes be turned around let each be on kingdom agenda take our attention of ourselves and cause us to focus on you in you is our satisfaction in you is our contentment in you we are full in you we are made whole in you we are helped. I praise you, Lord. I thank you. We are grateful, Lord. We don't take for granted what you are doing here in this place. Yes, Lord. We are waiting in your presence at this altar. And we are saying that nobody is living the same. In the name of Jesus, 
each of us are being filled each is being held the irritation the annoyance is dissipating is leaving us each of us are vessels unto righteousness each of us are being molded and fit into our divine assignment skills are falling off our eyes eyes to see and ears to hear in the name of jesus i thank you lord i thank you thank you for what you have done here in this place lord we are grateful unto you father we know that you have had your way with us and i know that the good work that you have begun in us you are faithful to complete it i thank you i thank you for my dear sister nana yeah for hosting us this evening i pray in the name of jesus that father you will consistently fill her flood her more of you more of you less of herself in the name of jesus cause her to be a vessel that always operates in the overflow i thank you lord i thank you i pray every burden every burden that is on that was on the heart of any sister at the time they logged in let every burden be supernaturally lifted off in the name of jesus let every sister receive an exchange a divine exchange their burdens for your burden put onto our hearts your burden oh god your burden to love your burden to align your burden in the name of jesus i praise you i thank you thank you for answered prayer in jesus name amen thank you amen 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 sisters God bless you, Pastor Adline. If we can just spend a minute praying for Pastor Adline. Father, we thank you for Pastor Adline's life. Father, we thank you for the way she's watered us and blessed us. Lord, we pray that you give her a great evening's rest. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will fill her more and more with your spirit. Let her turn up and be able to speak, Lord. Always give her a word in season, Lord. A word in season to always feed your flock, Lord. In Jesus, my name, we cover her with the blood of Jesus. We cover her children, her husband with the blood of Jesus. May this be a story in the kingdom that speaks about you and you alone. Jesus, mighty and matchless name, Lord Jesus, have we given. Amen and amen amen and amen and amen. And amen. If you are able to unmute, if you can unmute so we can share the grace, and then if you can stay on, if it's possible, for the 1010 session all the way to till 1 a.m. GMT. Um, do unmute and let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord. 